What's up, what's up? I'm Brand Man Sean. And I'm Corey. And we are back with episode number 16 of No Labels Necessary. You can catch us every Tuesday, every Thursday, wherever you stream podcasts, or of course, here on the YouTube. Now, if you don't know me and Corey, we're in the music business. We got an agency. We help artists move, you know, blow up all that good stuff. Mm -hmm, But but mm -hmm. here, but here, we're just trying to have some fun. You know, getting into the weeds of the conversations. People have hot topics, but we want to break them down deeper, talking content, music, business, and entrepreneurship. So let's get into it. As y'all know, we like to start off with a little advice with a segment we call Rate That Advice. Corey brought up this clip shared by David Sonia Beats. Shout out to David. Shout out to David. And he got some gems, I have to say. All right. If you don't understand this basic level, these basic three things, you're going to have a difficult time as an artist finding success today. So let's get into these three tips that David Sonia Beat says. Now, number one, he says, as an independent artist trying to establish yourself in an online landscape, there's three important things you need to understand today. Number one. Communication, in order to reap the benefits of online mass communication, you need to understand the target audience you want to communicate with and how what you share adds value to them. Does the platform you're building provide entertainment, insight, awe, community, motivation, etc. through your brand and music? Knowing what you want to communicate is the foundation of building your audience. Now, let's stop right here. I think that's the end of it. Vice snippet number one. Now, Corey, are there any particular things that stand out for you in that particular piece of advice? Figuring out what value you bring to your audience. Because I, I do yes. think that's yes. that's that's such a hard thing for artists to piece together, right? Yes. Uh, they're typically thinking about it from, yo, what value are you bringing me? Are you running my likes up? Are you giving me comments so you get my views up? But I don't think too many stop and think like, man, what do I represent to this person that just followed me? A thousand percent. Right? So yeah, that was was the first thing I said. That 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 one was heavy. Man, that's what I love (laughs) about that because like you said, knowing exactly the value that you are providing to your audience is a game changer for most artists. Yeah. But they don't ever think about it. So now you're just out there posting, posting, posting. How can I make sure the next post perform well if I don't even know why the last post performed well, Yeah. All right? Yeah. Or how can I at least stay consistent with it? And I noticed this pre-internet, not pre-internet, but I noticed this pre-me taking internet marketing seriously and being involved in it myself just when I was in the show side of music, yeah. Yeah. right? Because there's so many artists that are always thinking, how can I get people to come to my show? How can I get people to come to my show? What are the numbers? How can I collab with this person or work this at the door? Whatever, whatever to get mm. people to come in. And they're just thinking about them getting seen. Yeah. All right. And they're happy because this amount of people saw them perform versus the people who are thinking about how can I entertain the hell out of this audience? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when they show up, what am I going to do for them? What am I going to make them feel? Because those are the people that people say, yo, this person's dope. I want to come back. Yeah. Because you just made me feel something, whether that was fun, like he listed what, inspire. Oh. All community, <laughs> community is a big one too. Cause there's some right. artists that have dope communities that make you community is yeah. huge. Community yeah. is huge. That was like I'll pull that back up too. Entertainment. That was like one of the main things when we were doing the festival joint that I had to think about because I wasn't pushing an artist. All everybody else in my group were an artist, right? Oh yeah. I wasn't an artist, so I only was thinking about well, how can I entertain the hell out of everybody there, right? And how can I make everybody feel like they're meeting somebody so that way in the future they want to come back to this because they remember the time they had yeah you know what i mean because it's not gonna be a new song it's gonna be a new event right so that right there just understanding what value you can bring because it doesn't have to be even any of these things listed yeah right that's the crazy part about it there's so many different types of value just like you go to this artist for you love music and then you go to this artist for your fuckboy music, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you and if the fuckboy music switches up and all of a sudden talking, talking love, you're like, yo, yo, what you doing? Yeah, yeah. You know not what I mean? Day, bro. Not a day. You know, like the kids know if I want to go to, um, if I want to hear a certain type of feedback, I'm going to go to my mom. 
If I want to hear this type of advice, I'm going to go to my dad. If yeah. I'm going to hear this, I'm going to go to my brother. You know what I'm saying? Like, my sister would say the same. Oh, like, oh if I want to hear some, like, quit quit your job shit, I'm going to go to you. Yeah. Right? If, if I want to go to, like, these people don't matter and how do I finesse the corporate game, she would go to my, uh, my other brother or whatever. Yeah. Like, people already know. They, so, if they can't think and know what they're going to go to you for, no. you lost. Because yeah. what do you represent? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's how I said I'm, I I try to think about like at what point an artist is able to start figuring that out because I will get some of them that benefit of the doubt. It sometimes it's not obvious, right? Like you don't know what your audience is finding valuable uh, from you. Mm. I guess until you ask. Actually, I guess that solves the question. You just ask. Them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> like just say, hey, like why do you guys like me? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like what what are you kind of here for? Yeah. What about these posts or these things I'm posting are attracting you? So yeah. I can at least try to stay on path, but. Yeah, you're right. Most people probably can figure it out pretty. If you're paying enough attention to your audience, you can figure it out pretty quickly. Hell yeah, it's it's the feedback from the audience you said. But then, as an artist, you hope that the artist has some level of vision. Yeah. On what they want people to feel that's and true. what they want to provide too. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's so, true. That's true. You know, it's a, it's a it's a double sided thing. But don't just say, "Hey, you got to go with my vision," and I'm gonna try to push this vision, and people aren't feeling the vision either. Yeah. And then you have to get that feedback to see what it is that they actually do like about it. So there, it's a, it's a double sided thing. Now, part number two, differentiation. What will be your approach to stand out in the market? Will it be unique representation of your skill set, candid honesty, and rawness? visual gimmick etc how are you going to get noticed within three seconds to start an introduction to your brand and build rapport now when i read this i already think about the first piece of advice right yeah what value are you bringing it's almost another way of saying that of course it's like what value am i bringing to my audience plus what different value am i bringing to my audience Mm -hmm. so so you can have love right but how do i bring a different perspective on love you know what i'm saying yeah so it's like it'd be the same thing you know what you're talking about but now I'm like what's your approach am i raw am i funny with it am i uh angry with it whatever that might look like right yeah. um visual honor the, the gimmicks now we already know the gimmicks a lot of people think that just having a gimmick is enough but they don't realize that's a way to maybe stand out and get that attention, but gimmicks are never going to be enough substance to yeah. keep the attention. Yeah, it's the door opener. It's the door opener, and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, yeah there's like, nothing wrong with that. A good gimmick is beautiful, bro. Like I, I love a good gimmick, bro. Like, Great. like it's because that in itself is a, a level of genius. One, the fact that you have to be willing to be that different because nobody likes a boring gimmick. So most good gimmicks really go over the top. So the fact yeah. that you're willing to stand out that much says a lot about yep. the lens you're willing to go to as an artist. So that that I always give kudos right. to, to those artists, bro. <laughs> and that right there is is everything what you just said right there because you can look at somebody like Lady Gaga mm-hmm. early on she was doing the the meat costume and yeah. all these different outfits and stuff. Then you look at Lil Rod, uh, not Lil Roddy, Lil Yachty with the red hair, the baby right? with the diaper, the baby with the diaper, and all these things take a level of courage yeah. to stand out, but. What people don't realize, if you have the perseverance to get through that moment, it almost becomes a moment in time, but it doesn't define your define your overall career. Yeah, it becomes like, like a cool story to tell. You it's know a cool saying? story to tell. Yeah. You know, yeah, the kids yeah. like, oh, grandma I used to dress like this, or your hair used to be red, uh, <laughs> Papa Yachty. You know, that is is something I feel like a lot of artists get afraid of. All right, in terms of pushing their differentiation to a certain extent, because in your mind, it's so big, right? Because yeah. you're self centered. That's just natural. Like, yeah. we all are self centered to an extent, <laughs> but the world, the rest of the world is like, ah, it's not that big of a deal. It might be for a moment. People might give you that uproar, but yeah. they're going to forget about it. We're not really thinking all red hair when, whenever we see Yachty anymore. Yeah. Lady Gaga has far surpassed all them crazy outfits and things that she used to wear all the time. People might expect it of her, but you get to chill a little bit. Like, look, like uh, what's her name? Miley. When she oh, went yeah, the, far yeah. left, you yeah. know what I mean? She started. She swung all the way back. Hey, she, she, <laughs> yeah, she went out there and started playing with, with, the, with the folks down the street. <laughs> but then she came back home, right? And people aren't thinking about that era of Miley Cyrus yeah, right now. Yeah, so, yeah. I, I'm like you, like that gimmick, <laughs> that era of your career, if you do go that space, 
it takes some commitment and it's yeah. kudos because most people are not courageous enough to do it. But if you get over it, like, cause you, the whole the goal should never to be to stay in the gimmick. And if you can get over that, man, the the, the benefits can be beautiful. Yeah, I saying you you brought up a point I wasn't even thinking about, but <clears throat> I think it says a lot about how long you as an artist think you're going to be here. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, because, like you said, an artist with the right amount of time, perseverance, and all right, they, they keep dropping cool music, putting stuff out. Yeah, we as an audience understand that, like, you change. And, like, you know, if you were 18 doing stupid stuff, like, we expect now you're 24. I'm not expecting the same things. Or, like, or we just understand that artists evolve. Yep. Anyway, you know, I, I keep going back to that. We I got this narrative of the, the stupid consumer, bro. Or at least from artists. Artists thinking, like, oh, if I do this thing, they're gonna see me as this way forever. It's like, no, man. Like, only if you continue to do that thing, or if everything you do after that doesn't level up to what that thing was. Yep. Then we'll we'll stick on it as consumers. But if it's at least as good, you know what I'm saying, or, or better, then yeah, bro, we'll let you get away with it. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Let's get to that third piece of advice as well. Attention, the third tenant that you need to understand in this game if you want to use online marketing today. Combining the first two with a certain level of consistency is how you occupy real estate in a person's consciousness. Every interaction made is building a relationship with your audience through communicating the value in which you wish to serve them. Bet. Now, I love this. Like one of the very first YouTube videos that I did was basically talking about the importance of consistency in branding Mm -hmm. right because branding is your reputation built over time Mm -hmm. right your reputation is what people experience with you over time of course you have a first impression and they can be powerful but over time is where you really establish things so let's imagine this you got a guy in a hoodie all right okay that kid kid in the hoodie that's my favorite example you ever seen that kid in a hoodie at school were you the kid in the hoodie at school? Some days. All right. Were you the kid who <laughs> only wore a hoodie at school? No, no. You ever you had one of those kids at school? Yeah. That's on you. You walking me there. I think yeah. I see you. Yeah. <laughs> what did he become? The hoodie kid. Yeah. In your mind, it's the dude that's always wearing it. nothing special about the hoodie. We're not even talking about some kind of outlandish branding. We're just talking about, hey, this dude wear a hoodie every day, bro. That thing might be funky, like dog. Like, what's up? You wearing that hoodie every single day? Bam, it's branded in your mind. Yeah. Consistency is that powerful. <laughs> and you can do that with anything. But you know who else wore a hoodie? You wore a hoodie. You know who else wore a hoodie? Probably everybody in school <laughs> at some point, but they didn't own it. Yeah, like the hoodie kid. The hoodie kid owned it. <laughs> <laughs> it's that simple. And you hear all these artists be like, oh, I did this and I did that. But you didn't get all that credit for it. Well, it was like that person owned it. Yeah. That's literally the difference between... Hey, this is mine, and oh, I did it too. Yeah, bro, because wearing a hoodie seven days out of the week is crazy. It's crazy. Especially in Georgia, bro. With this bro, heat. when that shit get hot, too. <laughs> and you like, yo, this dude is committed. <laughs> you like, bro, at max, that max is 72 degrees in here, bro. Like, nah. you, you'll be all right. Take that shit off. <laughs> but, but that's a good point, too, with the, the whole, like, first thing. Because I, I do think that gets lost. Whereas, like, us as consumers, we very rarely notice who does it first. We notice... Who does it a lot? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, Cause it might take a, it might take me like the fourth or fifth time to even like catch on to like what somebody is doing. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just like, yeah, like I, I didn't even think about that. We don't know who does it first, but we know who does it the most. Bruh. Bruh. Cause it's like the uh and that goes back to the whole sales aspect of things. Yeah. You know that it yeah. takes you reaching out to people seven to eight times. Yeah. Just to get their attention or just to get a call or schedule a meeting. And honestly, I was Back in 2016, when I started seeing that stat, the way things are these days, it's you're probably like, even more. You're like 15 years yeah. of crazy shit, bro. Yeah, that you number's going up. <laughs> four times on Instagram, three times on TikTok, once on YouTube, maybe a little email blast. Everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> and then boom, they're like, oh yeah, I do want to go to that show. Let me go buy that ticket. It's like, damn you. Hey, it, it <laughs> happened with me. It happened with me. Uh, but we'll get to that later. <laughs> <laughs> so... Rate that advice, Jacory. What you? What you what we do, what, what's the scale? One to ten. What do you think about this set? Of I advice? give it a seven. Seven. Yeah. Seven out of ten. Yeah. Solid advice. Solid you know advice. You know what I'm All saying? Right. Get your get your cross finish line. Get you, I'll give you 
Yeah, six and a half. Yeah. Because it's 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 fundamental. Yeah. It's very important. It's not the game changing or some specific detail that you might be able to act on. But it's great. I actually like this is like six is actually a good number in here. I want to hear you guys rating of the advice. How helpful is is it for y'all? Or is there anything out of this set of advice that y'all think is dope? But shout out to David, sign your beats. Y'all go, you know, check buddy out. You know what I mean? And before y'all go check him out, make sure y'all like this video. Make sure y'all comment on this video. And if you're not subscribed, come on, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. All right. Now, next topic, we have to get to something that's going to change the game out here. Uh oh, like, like for real, for real, to the point that it's scary out uh -oh. here. Uh -oh. Um, <laughs> Some of y'all, y'all been looking for a team member. Well, you know, you, you got a free person that you can add to your team. I'll say that. Now, I don't know <laughs> if you actually want this person on your team. I was like, free? Because it ain't a person on your team. It's it's actually this chat GPT software. That shit is crazy. It is ridiculous. Is if y'all have not heard about it, this is AI software, and you can write messages throughout this, this app. What's the best way to say this? This app can create messages for you. Yeah. That's the best way to do it. do a lot, bro. I can make it. I've already been using it for a little bit of evil, social life evil. You no. Know nope. <laughs> Matter of fact, let's, let, we're going to just show you what this thing can do. Then we're going to talk about what it does in new applications. Because imagine this. Imagine that you never have to write a song yourself again. But you could just perform it. Mm. What's wrong with that? I don't think it's anything wrong with that. I mean, me either. You, you got all these artists <laughs> out here that people say, oh... You know, they didn't write the song. They just performed, but it's the one who performed it that's the lit big name. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now you can hire your own songwriter that you never have to pay <laughs> and get the credit. It's going to be at least 40% of the comments that don't agree with us, but but I'm with I, you, bro. I know. I know. Yeah, I know. Bro. Right? <laughs> hey, bro, you got to throw it out there. No, but let's, let's let's legitimately look at this. All right. So if you're looking at our screen now, you can see me typing this message, write a rap about money and let's see what it returns. It's about to load for a second. Got to let it think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's thinking. Right? This is really sitting here thinking about this. That's thinking deep. Oh, there we go. All right. Money, money, money always on my mind. Can't get enough. Always trying to grind. Got to stack my cash. Got to make it climb. Got to got my hustle on all the time. I ain't never satisfied. <laughs> always want more. Gotta get keep my eye on the prize. Gotta stay on the floor. I ain't never gonna stop till I reach the top. Gotta keep on climbing. Never gonna flop. Uh. That's like a cash out ad. <laughs> right, right. We, <laughs> hey man, you think about these um these placements, and they always have to, and they have to hire artists. Yeah, and you know those songs don't have to be as good. Yeah, facts. Yeah, that's true. So they that's might true. just start using this shit and then hire somebody to perform it. That's even easier because this stuff is good enough for the, um for them. Actually, they don't need the talent to come up with something. Money makes the world go round. Got to keep it coming. Can't let it down. I'll do whatever it takes. Make it mine. Got to keep on hustling to the end of time. That's like some early 90s yes. or maybe late 80s KRS-One type shit. I ain't never going to stop till I reach the top. Got to keep on grinding, grinding till I hit the jackpot. Money, money, money always on my mind. Got to keep on hustling to the end of time. All right. Now. We're going to add, make it funny. So we're talking to it right now. It's going to take this message and it's thinking, like, all right, how can I switch this up? Make it funny. And make it funny. <laughs> Let, let's see what that means. Money, 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 always on my brain. I can't get enough, always driving me insane. Got to stack my cash, got to make it grow. But every time I try, I just end up broke. <laughs> <laughs> I save it up, but it always slips away. I'm like a leaky faucet. Can't seem to make it stay. I try to budget, but it never works out. I'm like a squirrel. I just keep on chucking it out. What? I'm a money magnet, but I'm always attracting debt. I try to be frugal, but I can't help it yet. I'm like a hamster on a wheel, <laughs> spinning round and round. I'm always working, but I never seem to get ahead of the ground. 
but I ain't giving up. I, I'll keep on trying. I'll make it happen. I'll keep on striving. Money, money, money always on my mind. I get it right some I'll get it right someday. Just give me time. Damn, man, that's an ad for it. For it. Uh shit, getting your money, your financial literacy together. Hey, right. <laughs> that that is yet another ad, man. That that is a legitimate ad, at least, that uses some music. We can um if you think about like those uh like four one one pain yeah, exactly. <laughs> ads on the radio, because they be getting lit, man. Them, them, them songs sometimes <laughs> they catch me off guard. I'm like, oh shoot, I thought it was a real song. These people can start using those. Yeah, right. That's why I was like, is it funny because it's funny or because like it's roasting me? You know what I'm saying? Like it's attacking. Well, I guess not. Whoever is writing it for is like, you know, it's setting set you up for failure. At yeah. least in that instance. Right, right, yeah, right. That instance, yeah. But like when we so this is interesting because I know many of y'all artists are like, yeah, okay, these songs, these lyrics are whack, right? Yeah. But we already just listed a host of scenarios that legitimately people will be fine with that. Yeah. They might make a couple tweaks here and there, but they're like, oh, this is a great bass. I can never write a rap now, I'll never have to hire an artist. And those type of deals are like good cash for for artists. Yeah. All right. I know uh, a rapper who she had a deal with a local car lot. She did like two or three commercials, helped create them a viral song. Um, who else? I mean, we know the the sync placements, like uh, Cash Mace did 100K with Sphinx, Sphinx or whatever. Um, Pusha T McDonald's. Pusha T McDonald's. All that type of stuff. Yeah. They could come up with ba da ba ba ba. I'm loving it. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's short. They might be long-winded, right? So- <laughs> All that type of money is the most immediate threat. Yeah. But these things might continue to get better and better. If you go back to, I forgot the artist's name, but like that AI artist. Oh, yeah. Like the, 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 the rapper or whatever. Yeah. So they're checking a, a fake character, like a video game type character, because people are invested in video games and people fall in love with their characters and all that kind of stuff. So you take that type of character and image, and then you create lyrics through AI, you literally eliminated a human. And now yeah. I don't have to worry about this artist wanting their cut. I don't have to worry about any complaining and opinions. And I could create so many of these quickly without even touching anything. Yeah. Right? So whatever extra money you think you would have been able to make, oh, well, that artist is only making, you know, that fake artist is only making $2 million, but if he really had a real hit, I might make you 20 million well it's like i don't know with all the expenses and of paying you i could just pay like create like five more artists and everything equals out somehow all right i i don't know like that i don't know you can't you can never truly replace human creativity i don't think but you can you can scrape the bottom of that barrel you can knock it down a little bit you, you can knock it down <laughs> yeah. all right those first levels are it, we getting real close. That's, this shit's kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's a, the, the general sentiment I keep seeing from a lot of the arts community is like exactly what you said. Will we be replaced? I don't think they will be completely replaced. I think it'll just be artists moving into almost like managerial positions, right? Or almost like a copywriter, like a copywriter, you know, editor. You know what I'm saying? It's like I'm not the one maybe writing the baseline for everything, but I come down, I come behind it and touch it up and add human elements to mm. it, right? I go and add in some words that make it sound more culturally relevant or like not dated, like you know, like the one we just saw. Mm -hmm. But like you said, that is still possibly like one person. You know what I'm saying? They could still be managing like a lot of that stuff. You know yep. what I'm saying? So it still it still yeah. doesn't require like a lot of artists to do it. That's that's why I think it will go if the industry starts taking AI songwriting pretty seriously. Cause somebody has to man. It's just, it's like technology, bro. Like you already know. Yeah, we can make the machine to do the work, but somebody now somebody has to manage the machine. You know what I'm saying? Know how to fix the machine exactly. and, and and push it into it. So that's why I think this is gonna go. The before I even go in too much deeper into that, there's a couple more scenarios we want to share with y'all just to really show y'all how crazy this is. We know y'all yeah. don't like the 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 creating your song lyrics, but we got some stuff that y'all gonna want this for. Yeah, and y'all <laughs> are gonna be cool with it and. <laughs> copywriters people who write for people they're gonna feel like how y'all feel so everybody <laughs> getting hurt in here <laughs> don't think it's all about you people aren't attacking the artists people are shoot they attacking humans <laughs> here so i'm about to type in this sentence right here 
Email to music fans. No, like email my music fans a heartfelt thank you letter for attending my show. Let's see what comes out. All right, so here's the letter. Now, of course, you can tweak this, but it just says, Dear Music Fans, I just wanted to express my heartfelt gratitude to all of you who attended my recent show. Your support and enthusiasm mean the world to me. I am so grateful to have had the opportunity to perform for you. Thank you for taking the time to come out and see me perform. Your presence in the audience was a huge part of what made the show such a special experience for me. Your energy and support really helped to lift me up and make me feel like I was doing what I love. I can't thank you enough for your support and for being part of my musical journey. I am truly grateful to have such wonderful fans like you. That was pretty beautiful. That was good, bro. Yeah. If I got that, I believe it. I think you wrote that. Exactly. <laughs> you would think a human wrote that. And you know what I mean? This is a, just a great baseline for anybody who has writer bl- writer's block, right? Yeah, You're like, yeah. ah, I don't know exactly what to say. Well, you, you ask this and then you start from here. I like doing that. I love starting with something already there. Yeah. I can flow a lot quick, quick, uh, quicker. That blank page, boy, that should be getting me sometimes, man. That's right. When you do puzzles, do you look at the box? Do I look at the box? Yeah, like the picture on the box, you just go in. I just go straight for it. I just went in. It's a crazy ass question. Because the ties of this, bro, it's ties of the same thing, the template thing, bro. Like <sighs> some people like to do the puzzle going in blind. Some people like that look at the picture on the box and know what they're working with. I have not done a puzzle <laughs> in so long. I really can't tell you. <laughs> I mean, a lot of times you know the box though. I don't follow the bo- the picture on the box, I yeah. guess. Probably. I think I've looked, you know, I might be aware where the picture is and then I just try to go from there. Oh, okay, I got you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think that, <laughs> whatever that means, man, I feel like my horoscope just got read or something, bro. <laughs> oh, man. Well, yeah, but and then copywriting, in my opinion, is a very underrated skill set in music. Yeah. That I don't think a lot of artists even typically feel like they need to have. You know what I'm saying? Like, how many times have we taught artists that just get stressed out writing their own emails? Yeah. Or, I mean, even the, the next couple of examples I know you're about to get into, but yeah, man, it's like this, that copy is beautiful, bro. Like, that is, it's not like 10 out of 10 copy, but it's at least six, seven, you know what I'm saying? Like, if you're an artist sorry at a one or a two, then this is a great start. Yeah. As a matter of fact, you know, I'll show some other stuff that we can do with it right here. I'm just going to say, hmm, I'll just say make it shorter, right? Could say make it longer, but even these type of adjustments can be made. The fact that it's this far along is interesting. Yeah. I'll say that. It's literally like talking to an employee, like, hey, bro, cut it down. <laughs> exactly. You're right. All right. So, what's the new version? Ooh, way shorter. All right. Sure. So, we went from one to basically three paragraphs to one paragraph, and it's Dear music fans, thank you so much for attending my recent show. Your support means the world to me, and I'm grateful to have had the opportunity to perform for such a wonderful audience. Thank you for being a part of my musical journey. Bam. Damn. Succinct. Yeah, right? And the thing, like I said, I could have said, make it longer. We ain't about to do that example, but we are <laughs> about to show you some other interesting stuff. Right? So what about your captions on Instagram for some of these posts? Create an Instagram caption promoting my new song about love. All right, I had to describe what the song's about. Let's see. It's thinking. It's thinking. If you can see the screen, you'll see that it says new music alert with an emoji. Just released a new song about love and it's already becoming a fan fa- favorite. Hearts. Give it a listen and let me know what you think. They got the headphone emoji, hashtag new music, hashtag love, hashtag singer songwriter. I should put the hashtags in there. That's crazy. That is. That <laughs> is. I want to do that same caption. I feel like there's maybe it might be because of the overload. You're supposed to be able to just say, give me another suggestion too. Oh, yeah. The little, yeah they... Like he remixing it. We're going to type that exact same thing in one more time. Let's see what it says this time. New song alert. Just dropped my latest track about all the ups and downs of love. Give it a listen. Let me know what you think. New music, love, songwriter. All right, there we go. Regenerate response. 
Let's see what it says now. <laughs> it just switched the emoji out. It the, just, the- <laughs> that's, that's exactly what it did. Switch the emoji out and then the second sentence. But it keeps coming with new music or new song alert, which is the reality. A lot of times that's all we do. Yeah. Right, you just be you just make a small adjustment because you know it works. I want last time I'll do this. I'm gonna take out the new part so it can stop saying new music. My song about I'm gonna keep it love just because we want to compare it to the other ones. Feeling the love just released a new song about all the ups and downs of relationships. Give it a listen and let me know what you think. All right, now if you can read this whole thing and see the emojis, yeah, it actually switched to format. So all you got to do is play with the wording of what you tell it, and then it's going to come from a different angle. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, this is when we really get into it, and I think for the artist, it's going to be extremely helpful, and it's going to hurt for some of these copywriters. So provide a promo email to fans to buy my merch and create a call to action. Hi, everyone. I hope this email finds you well. I wanted to reach out and let you know about some exciting news. I've just launched a new line of merch. This includes t-shirts, hoodies, and other items featuring designs inspired by my music. If you're a fan of any of my music, I would really appreciate your support purchasing some merch. Not only will you be able to show off your love for my music, but your purchase will also help me continue making my new music for you, making new music for you to enjoy. Plus, as a special thank you, I'm offering a 15% discount on all merch purchases made in the next 48 hours. Good Lord, they put the scarcity in there. I didn't even get a chance to ask. <laughs> Simply use promo code MERCHLOVE at checkout to redeem your discount. Don't miss out on this chance to get some awesome merch and support your favorite artists at the same time. Visit my merch store now and start shopping. Thank you for your continued support, and I can't wait to see you rocking your new merch. Man. Man. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn. This is crazy. This is this is crazy all from just some AI. You type it in and they and they feed this out to you. And there's other iterations. We're not gonna go too much deeper. Um, just for for time's sake. I think y'all get the point. This is something that everybody should play around with though. Just to just to see and get a sense of where things are going and can go. Um the website is chat openai.com maybe we'll put a link somewhere in the description for people um who don't know about this or haven't heard the news already but i even played around things like write a 20 second funny skit right things that you could use for tiktok and i gave it different subjects to do the skit about so it's out there like you need some ideas for your tiktoks trying to save a couple bands from a copywriter or a little content ideator hey moving on to the next subject though all right. Chameleon there, he threatened the record labels. Did you know about this? I didn't know about that. He he so. threatened the la- record, record labels, and Chameleon there almost brought them to their knees. Like a specific label or, or all of them? His label, his label. Okay, okay. But okay. <laughs> still, could have brought the whole industry to their knees in a sense, though. Like, for real, for real. This is some crazy shit that I'm about to play, and it's going to say so much. <laughs> and at the same time, even though he's not saying everything that he wants to say, oh, but I'm nervous. Check check this out, man. <laughs> like this this is this is crazy. Hold up. The the state of the music industry is designed to rip off an artist. That's what I believe. I believe that when the check gets handed to an artist, the check is normally not right. The first person that told me this was Nelly. Nelly told me, you know, you got to learn how to do this thing called an audit. And I was like, what is that? (laughs) And then he was like, man, you got to get a lawyer. And so I searched, I found Jay-Z's auditor, right? And then this guy went and said, I'll do it for, you know, I'm not going to charge you up front. I'm going to take a piece. And I was like, okay. So he goes and he finds over $600,000 that the label hid for me. So I was like, wait a second. Is this the way it always is? It's like, yeah, you got to keep on doing this. So I realized all my peers didn't know this. And the way I got off of Universal when they didn't want to let me go is I told them, if you don't let me go, I'm going to go teach all these guys on the label how to do an audit. (laughs) (laughs) And they let me go because of that. They didn't want to pay all that money. The the state of the- That's wild. That's a wild threat. I'm going to teach everybody how to get their money, bro. You don't let me off this shit. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry, chill out, chill out. Go about your way. Yo, bro. <laughs> no, no problem. Bruh. Uh, 
I mean, that's a, that'd be a wild bill. Let's just say what? Let's just say. That's like 500 artists times 600,000. I'm flat doing the math, but that's a lot of money. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, 600,000, give or take. Who knows how much they, they might have owed other people. Yeah. That, see, I, I know it might have seemed like I might have been over hyping it, but like, actually, that for real. Yeah, it would fuck the game up. That would. <laughs> <laughs> that really could mess some folks up. Literally, just, oh, man. It's crazy to hear that, though. It's like, yeah. man, like. But if you not, hold on to me, I'm going to educate people. <laughs> yeah, like, like I said, I'm going to teach the whole building how to burn this shit down, pretty much. This is basically what he was saying. Because yes. like, he's right, man. Like, it is that that part of the industry was like, yo, how how far, how long can we go with finessing the artists, right? Like, mm-hmm. how long until they hit that education curve or start getting around artists that's been in the game longer than them, right, bro? Like, I, I, I don't think labels purposely try to stop artists from being educated on this stuff, but I don't feel like they try to help. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, no. But they 100% don't try yeah, to help, yeah, like, like, uh, to a certain extent. There's, there's some, like, maybe indie labels, right? Yeah, indie labels, yeah. They make that a thing because they want to be family and, like, have a certain level of culture. But, now, labels as a whole, this is basically a symbol for society as a whole. We talk about what government teaches us in school and what they don't. <laughs> I mean, you're right. That's like, a good point. Yeah, that's a direct line example. <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, nah, we don't want to teach them. We ain't gonna not go, gonna let them t- learn it, but we ain't gonna teach it either. Yeah, we're, not, we're not gonna push you down that path. Yeah, which is fucked up, bro. Because I feel like if they did teach artists this, actually, never mind. I was about to say, yeah, but 100 percent gives the interest. <laughs> but it'd be a great look, you know. Maybe the artists would work harder to make them more money. You know what I'm saying? Like, if somebody taught me how to make an extra 600K, like, I mean, I feel like I feel pretty indebted. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Maybe it's just me. But what if that way to make a 600K is to audit me? You know what I mean? That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's different than a different way of showing somebody how to get a bag. <laughs> that's like saying, hey, you know, I tend to screw you over, so what you need to do is <laughs> stop letting me do it <laughs> stop letting me do it like i don't know nah, i don't that one doesn't work and showing how to get a bag a different way for sure but yeah that one is like nah you know i don't be doing what i'm supposed to be doing so yeah nah what's what's interesting is one artist like y'all have to educate yourselves every day is entrepreneurship for an artist even though artists don't want to take that on yeah and a lot of the stuff that you hear that feels like extra is just the fact that a lot of it's business. Mm-hmm. And it seems like, oh, why do I have to do all this stuff and not be an artist? Well, now we're in an era where that benefit of being able to blow yourself up or get attention without having to go through a label mm-hmm. comes with the other stuff that the label was doing. Mm-hmm. Like the stuff was being done. Don't act like... Look, don't get it twisted. Labels were never doing zero. Yeah. Right? Like, they they have function, the organization, structure, you know, basic admin, mundane work sometimes, like getting bills and even sending invoices, right? All that stuff (laughs) is just boring, (laughs) right? You know what I mean? Let alone maybe some things they should have been done and someone's supposed to be doing marketing, distribution, whatever, whatever. But, like, even just that little stuff, like, something was getting done because, at the very least, they had to get their money. <laughs> like, like, the screw, even to screw somebody over is a level of work. Yeah. Right? So, a lot of that stuff has now been passed on to you because you're taking on more responsibility. And, I mean, I think one shout out to Nelly, right? Yeah. Like, for mentioning that, because actually learning from other artists and people in this game. I haven't seen any better way because this game is just too multifaceted. There's no book that you can go to in this game. Yeah. There's no single book. There's no single course. There's no single person that's going to teach you all the different nuances of the game at the time that you need it in the game, right? It's a collection of things in music. And, <laughs> man, look, talk to people, collaborate. Yeah. That's actually the biggest thing that I get from that outside of, like, the, the funny shit or crazy shit about them, like, just – the threat that is a wild threat, like you said. Like I'm gonna teach them how to audit you, <laughs> but like the the ability to collaborate and not just in music, but in information is that is the game. Yeah, bro. That's why the antisocial artist usually loses. Either at least mm. the, the ones are like really antisocial because there's some that kind of put on the front, right? Like I'm a 
I'm a loner, you know what I'm saying, by myself. But it's like, they're successful to a degree. It's probably not true. They probably got at least a handful of people around them, right? Mm-hmm. They may not be the most sociable guy or girl. You know, they're not at every party, but they, they know how to work a room and talk to people when they need to, right? Ask yep. questions the right way when they when they need it. So, like, whenever I come across, because usually it's a, I, I see the issue mainly with, like, smaller rising artists. They don't want to go out and ask questions because they don't want to look stupid, right? They don't want to be the person, you know what I'm saying, walking up, hey, Sean, I got a question for you. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to be that person, bro, but it's like, yo, you, you have to be, you know what I'm saying? Because like you said, it's like every every person sees a game in a different way, which even if you don't completely agree with their perspective on it, it's still valuable. Like I've yep. heard other people's perspectives on the way, you know, they think we should be doing things or just even other thing, things we kind of debate on. It's like, I may not, agree with it but i learned something from it right 100%. they can still be applicable to whatever my perspective is or whatever it is i'm trying to do so but that's that's why it's like the greatest the greatest divide is the or the greatest way to fuck up artists is just to keep them from talking to each other bro you know what i'm saying it's like <laughs> you don't want them to rise up and revolt bro it's like hey, just make them beef keep them away from each other you know mm-hmm. what I'm you go to your you go to studio a you go to studio d don't y'all dare talk to each other. I don't want to hear no game being exchanged in here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Just keep making music and shut up. <laughs> Yo, I mean, that is that's exactly what it is. And that's why we we format this show, this podcast like this, right? Because mm-hmm. we can always just talk on snippets or like top level advice. But when you're actually in the industry, the true gems that we get from our experiences are having conversations that are just casual like this. Mm -hmm. And you have to go offline sometimes and then come back, right? Like, and start connecting all these dots. It's a more abstract conversation versus, hey, here's three tips, da-da-da. Like, you're not about to go sit down with somebody (laughs) who's up in the game and they're like, and you ask them for some advice. It's like, hey, here's three tips for the rest of your life and how you go uh, about, like, starting this record label or blowing this song up. It's not that. It's This is going on. Oh, okay, you should do X, Y, and Z. And then you start giving more details. It's deeper than that. So we try to go um, into the weeds in this conversation is definitely why um we format it like this and i think if artists like you to your point right can find ways to mimic circles where they have that same ability to do stuff like this they're gonna win right or or it'll help them win more than they would have without it yeah and that's why i I feel kind of old heady even about to say this but I do think a little bit of that died when going to the studio became a little less popular. Mm, you know that's true. You know what I'm saying? Because that true. I feel like that was the space, right? Like yeah. you know what I'm saying, like you, you bump into people, you meet other people. But there's a lot of artists that just make music at home, where like they have their home studio with like their one or two engineers. You know, of course, like they go, to, some of them go to like writing camps and things, which probably makes up for it. But yeah. I mean, you talk about like. 10, 20 years ago, but it was like networking every day because you had to go to you had mm-hmm. to go to the studio to make the music, right? So you were forced into a networking situation every day. Versus like today, if I don't want to network for the rest of the whole week, I don't have to. I can stay in my room. You know what I'm saying? Just That's make this shit point. in my in my my bedroom, put it out, and then I don't know, go play Fortnite or some shit. You know what I'm saying? So I, I do think like that is a a part of it and socials, you know, because everyone feels like everyone is just a DM away. So I don't think there's necessarily like the same urgency to get out of network in real life as that yeah. may have been at some point. Because I, I might go like, oh, I miss Sean. Sean's going to be at this show tonight. I should go to that show and try to meet him. Mm, I can just DM him tomorrow. Like, well, yep. What am I going to leave the house for? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why am, I, why am I going though. anywhere? So. And look, bro, to your point, you can think about school. Yeah. That studio environment is kind of like school in a way that Hey, you're going to see these people all the time. And it doesn't even mean like that you have to talk to everybody the first time you see them. You're not just there like, hey, I'm there to network. Yeah. But, oh, I saw this artist three or four times. Eventually, we might exchange words. Eventually, now we're sitting down and having a real conversation at some point because we're just sitting out in the like community area. Oh, I like the song that I hear or we're talking about something that has nothing to do with music. That's how those relationships naturally occur versus now you have to intentionally say i'm going out the network mm-hmm. and that's more intimidating yeah way more intimidating <laughs> way more intimidating <laughs> it's just like hey oh yeah i'm going to school i'm going to work that's what hey a lot of people have trouble that's when they find out whether they got game or not after this college and then you go through it into the workforce and then you're not working from um in the the office you're working from home yeah how do you just go out and meet people yeah 
how do I make new friends? How do I get a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever? Like it's a it's a different type of environment. So I you actually brought the conversation to a whole nother place with the actual <laughs> networking in, in person thing. But one hundred percent, like just collaboration co- conversation is the fastest way to move in this industry. Yeah. And if you rob yourself of that, like you you you're taking yourself um you, you just robbing yourself of, out of out of something that you really can't replace you can't replace other people's minds and you can't learn fast enough to collect all the information cuz the industry is still moving yeah. so with that being said brandmannetwork.com y'all go to brandmannetwork.com our community is free there's already people who are saying i've been in this thing only a few days and i'm getting gems that are way better than anything else. But that's talking to other people, not just me or Ja'Cory or anybody in our team. It's the type of knowledge in that community. It's completely free. You do have to be accepted into the community, but you can apply into the community. Or if you get invited by somebody else, you can go ahead, you know, go ahead and get accepted as well. Check that out, brandmannetwork.com. With that being said, next subject. And remember, we talked about shows. Ah. <laughs> So let's bring this up right here. Jeezy, Jeezy, Jeezy. Last week, he dropped the flyer. Thug Motivation 101. We talking about a classic project. And he's performing live with the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. Great orchestra. Great orchestra. Great orchestra. You know what I mean? (laughs) I'd I'd say one of the best city symphony orchestras. (laughs) It's one night only. You know, that's the kind of stuff they get to say when those kind of performances. January 27th, 2023. Now, last week we're talking about, so he probably dropped this. Well, actually, I could look at the date on the post. Five days ago. So the 14th or 15th, somewhere, or one of those days. And it's not until January. The, the, The tickets, man. I thought that I'd be able to. You know, a few days later on the weekend when I slow down, go on there, see what the tickets cost, go ahead and buy some. Now, I'll share the graphics because I had to see the screenshots of the tickets. What oh, you I took found. screenshots? I did. I took screenshots, <laughs> man, because I was appalled by the pricing of these damn tickets. Like, well, well, let me find these screenshots. I put them in our, in our little channel. Let me see. Bam. Oh, I did see this. Yeah. I didn't know what this was. That was me. Was. Yeah, okay. That yeah. was me being a poll <laughs> on my phone. The the, te- the cheapest tickets were $587.73. Now, I think there was two of those. And I'm thinking about it still. I'm like, no, nah, it's crazy, actually. I always say my, my problem sometimes is I go in and if shit is like way more than I expected, yeah. then I got to stop and think. Because <laughs> I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Even if I got it. I don't know. I thought I was talking about $50, not $500. So then I took some time to think, and I was like, I don't know, maybe. Let me go back and at least just see and look at it and think. And then those $500 tickets are gone. The cheapest one at that point came, it was like $1,200. As y'all can see who are looking at the screen, well, actually, we're going to share. Y'all can't see it right um, just yet. You got $1,660 each. There's some tickets for $2,000. I'm sure there there are uh, many multiple more at this point. Now here's my thing. It's a beautiful thing. It hurts for me. Yeah. Right? It, it definitely hurts for me because there were so many things I had set up for that night. I I, I could have saw so many wins. But it's beautiful when you already have a brand, you already have an audience, mm-hmm. and you can do anything like this and it sell out, right? Mm-hmm. That's the dream. But there's a couple of things that make this even more special. Number one, this is a one night only experience. This isn't a whole concert series where I'm going mm-hmm. city to city. I'm doing multiple nights in the city. So that means scarcity. Yeah, scarcity. Yep. Sell out even faster then. Demand even higher then. I, I ain't never really going to be the type of person that's like, okay, maybe I could do 500. For this ticket, I just don't really spend 500 plus on people's tickets. That I'm just not that person. But they even had me thinking, eh, I don't know. I might. I might. Now, why might I? One eye only, that helps. 
two, this isn't a regular Jeezy concert. Because mm-hmm. I just saw Jeezy at one music fest. I saw a couple of performances. Like, it was like two days ago. No, two months ago or whatever. And he was performing. But this is with the orchestra. This is a different experience. Mm-hmm. This is a different aura. You got all this in my mind. Black excellence in the room <laughs> who grew up to Jeezy music with that underground feel, that rap grit at that time but this is the orchestra so we in some fancy shit damn we love life you got the bubbly out you got the champagne this is champagne life early sean uh john you know uptown records this is the type of image i'm seeing in my head we got money now we made it we used to listen to this jeezy and big ass shirts now we got fitted suits on that's the shit i'm seeing in my head right so you got a vision you know what i mean (laughs) Bro, you laughing? I'm serious, bro. This is what I'm saying. I'm like, okay, that could be cool. And this is a date for the wife. And I'm in music, so I could probably write this shit off, you know? You know? (laughs) 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 And it's going to be plenty of networking because I know because of the man and the specialness of this event, there's going to be some like dope people there. You know what I mean? And this is in Atlanta. He uh, kind of blew up in Atlanta. All that, all that, right? So once you got that vision that can be created in a fan's mind, Come on now. Yeah. You can charge so much more money. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> so people are those experiences, those things are happening in real time. And then I find out this, bro. So I thought I was just being slow, which I was still. Like you get, you know, you got to get on tickets, Sean. You know what I mean? I learned this too many times. I think one of the first people. I really got hit with that hard was LMA because I didn't think nobody learned knew about LMA. I was like, let me go see this LMA concert. Hey, but that's a great point. The the level of disrespect as a fan you're giving to the artist by assuming yeah. that, bro, is crazy. Like, yeah. man, somebody fuck with you like that. I can bro, get this ticket in two weeks. That's exactly. <laughs> bro, that drug shot sold out so fast. I was like, what the hell? I thought I knew about LA. Ain't no nobody else knew about LA yet. It was like, man, like I don't even know if boot up happened or LMA it was right. It was so fresh, but yeah. So one, you can't sit on that. And, and and when you create that experience though with somebody and they miss out yeah. that next time around, right? Yeah. Now they're gonna move faster. So you already have a new crop being created for <laughs> next time around. Cause it's real scarcity. This isn't like that fake and then oh everybody gets in. It's like, dang, yeah. people are really missing out. So that's a beautiful thing. But what I found out is the same thing with that Taylor Swift stuff too. The resellers, the bots. Oh, shit. Yeah. You know how I figured it out? Huh? I'm going through the comments. Because I just can't believe, man. I'm like, dang, bro, this junk is gone. So I go back to the original flyer, right? I put the flyer back up on the screen. I go in the comments, and you see people saying stuff like, it's 10.01. The tickets are already sold out. And there's multiple people saying it's 10.01. So then in my mind, I put together, oh, they must have just became available at 10 o'clock. Mm. Yesterday, I assumed they had just been on sale all week and I was being super slow. But actually, I looked only eight to ten hours after they were available. Not knowing that, but that, when I looked, it was only eight to ten hours. Apparently, hey, them resellers already knew it was about to be hot. They scooped them up. Like, there were people... <laughs> It was some lady, I forgot what she said. She either like stopped in the middle of her meeting at work or something and all that. Like it was like people doing like weird stuff. That's crazy. And then coming to find out they sold out literally a minute after they were supposed to be available, which is actually kind of the experience I had with the the Ella type situation. So <laughs> the reseller market is a whole nother thing we got to plan for these days. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to get around that one yet. I haven't personally, outside of just like asking somebody, I'm still going to ask around like people I know like for a possible connect, but I don't even know how to, like as a fan, like bump like the artist side and like giving y'all <laughs> advice on this one. As a fan, how do you navigate the reseller market and when, when this happened for an artist you like? plan for it like you said bro it's like is it, cause you try to plan for it based off of how popular the artist is so for example i know if let's say drake tickets that one probably dead resellers know what they're getting you know what i'm saying they, they're probably gonna tax the arm and the leg for it but then yeah. let's say it's like maybe a b minus tier artist i fuck with and i'm like okay well if the boss get all this ticket and he's already selling them for a hundred can't be too much more than maybe three, four hundred, right? And I started gauging my head. Do I like this artist enough to spend yep. three, four hundred dollars or whatever? So 
yeah, plan for it or shit, start saying who you know that knows somebody, bro. That'd be the first <laughs> thing I do is like, yo, man, I, I happen to see that you follow uh, this artist manager on Instagram. Like, I think you could hit him and see what's up with these tickets that sold out in 30 seconds for some reason. But I'm pretty sure I can't. I, I want to say I feel like I heard about somebody working on like maybe a software or something to come to come back ticket box because somebody needs to do something about it, bro. I don't know if there's anything crazy, that can man. be done, bro, but like something needs to happen, bro. It's getting crazy because yeah, two bands for for a Jeezy concert is crazy. How you know how much the tickets were originally? I don't. <laughs> I don't, man. That's the part that hurts the worst. You don't even know how bad you get for now. I don't. I don't. I have. I literally have no gauge. I'm just out there in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> it, it feels horrible, but I would also say this. Again, you got the scarcity, the mm-hmm. single show. So it validates higher prices and what and demands. At some point, in some ways, it might even help brand wise for him because it looks like the demand is there, right? Mm-hmm. That's a good point. I was about to say, I have a conspiracy theory that the ticket, ticket people are doing, like the, the ticket distributors. I want to hear that because I already I want to go into like some branding <laughs> benefits of doing this type of show, but no, I want to hear this conspiracy theory. All right, man. So I have this conspiracy that this this, this not Ticketmaster. I'm just gonna use Ticketmaster in the example because we all know Ticketmaster. You know what I'm saying? It just makes it easy. But uh, I have the theory that Ticketmaster and Ticketmaster Master S companies get these bot softwares, and they are. Purchasing the tickets. One, like you said, to increase the perception that the demand is high. Hey, we can make this artist that's selling tickets through us look lit, pretty much. Yeah, your tickets sold out in X amount of hours. And then two, when we resell, because most of these ticket platforms have like an official like resale market. You know what I'm saying? Like where they they now allow you to come onto the platform to resell your ticket. So it's like, I'm still going to be selling this shit through my platform. The demand is going to be high. The perception of of how lit this shit is gonna be high, and I know that the people that are looking at this part of it are perfectly fine with buying tickets that have been marked up ten x. You know what I'm saying? Some crazy shit. So now I can make ten x the amount of money I would have made initially if I just sold yeah. this shit regularly, bro. I'm I telling you, bro. For you. I'm telling you, bro. I got something for you. <laughs> this is 2018. That's crazy. Yep, I remember seeing this a minute ago. And I couldn't remember the exact claims and how I went went out, but no, nah, you are right. <laughs> the element is here. Ticketmaster has secretly been cheating you with its own scalpers. That's crazy, its bro. Its own scalpers. Undercover investigation reveals a professional scal- scalping racket run by Ticketmaster itself. Man. Rolling Stone. You know, I was ahead of my time, behind <laughs> at the same time. That's crazy, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, hey bro, you know, black people can't just be like, "Damn, I was late." And it was like, I, was like, <laughs> I, was like, I was ahead of my. I was just say, "Hey bro, I like that one. I like that." <laughs> uh, so no, and back to my other point, though the branding perception that you gain from doing a different type of event mm. than a regular concert adds to your story. Yeah. In general. Why? Because one, doing another concert is great. You sell out, you make the mo- the money, all that, great. But there's no story to it unless you do something massive, like and you just break some kind of record. Cool. But oh, I did a concert next to the pyramids in Egypt, like Russ. There's a story to that. There's something interesting. I did it in the middle of the park, right? There's a story to mm-hmm. it. It's something interesting. And then you add to your brand perception because you come off as more creative, more right, more pioneering when you mm-hmm. do things other than just a regular show. And then for Jeezy at this leg of his career, for him to do something with the Atlanta Symphony Orchestra, it elevates, right? Yeah. right? There's like a classy niche. You know, money is a part of Jeezy's brand, yeah. right? You know, his grown man way. Yeah, right now, it's you know. like I want my grown yeah. man boss type stuff, right? So there's an added element to that that it does for his brand, and here's the kicker. You don't have the risk of trying to sell out a massive arena when you do something like this as well. You know you're going to sell out because it's only maybe 1,200, 2,000 seats, whatever, something like that, Atlanta Symphony Orchestra. But compared to trying to sell 
5,000, 10,000, 15,000, whatever. Like you're on a different leg of your career, so you might not be as hot. Let's do something small, but still be able to make a story out of it. Yeah. Right? And sell that thing out ASAP. The numbers are higher and more expensive, so that elevates my brand too. And I can capture footage. I don't know if he's going to do that, but I would. I would capture footage, have this thing, a whole story laid out, maybe, you know, document some before and after, you know, create the the through line, have the performance, and then you can sell that off to Netflix, sell that off to whoever wants that content. Or if you can't sell it off because your brand isn't there or, you you know, your network is a connection is not there, still put it on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> and make sure everybody sees that. So it, it's so much to gain from doing a, a off the beat type performance from the, literally the brand perception, the additional monetization and the lower risk yeah. of everything that comes with trying to put on a super high production, pack out the big arena type show. Yeah, yeah that's true. man. them tickets really two bands, man. You said going to cash out. Hey. Well, ticket mask going to cash out at least. So yeah, somebody's cash. Yeah, somebody cash. That we know. <laughs> so, somebody, somebody. But again, like, hey, what if if he was breaking even on the show and then was able to just sell the content off though and still make a big bag? Yeah, it's just a different space. And so many artists, as you elevate, like if you if you record your show experiences and make them special, maybe you're not able to do it now because your brand isn't there, but. At some point, you're going to have this legitimate content that can be sold and be worth so much more than you might even get at a regular show because you can reach a lot more people. Maybe your fans aren't as concentrated in the city. I remember when I was younger, my mom had this Luther Vandross VHS tape. It was like him live, maybe Wimbledon or somewhere in England. I don't know. I don't know. It was something like that, right? Just live performance. Really dope classic performance or whatever, but... People have been selling their shows forever. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, as content, it's not a new thing that Netflix is buying a, a concert series and, or you can, you know, put it in a movie theater and people will go see it. Like, that has been happening. Damn. We just need to think about it like that. Yeah, I didn't think about it. Artists don't do that as much anymore. I don't, I don't think I've seen anyone selling their show footage in a no. while. It had been a long time that I had seen it. Um, since I had seen it, and then Beyonce did it. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe Beyonce is the last person. Yeah. That was kind of it. I think more people, because you know, typically when Beyonce does something, there's those few people where all of a sudden other people like start to try that type of thing. Yeah. But no, I'm I'm not really seeing it anywhere near as much as I used to see. That's it. That's crazy. Is it? I wonder if it's because no one's thinking about it, or that? Well, I guess they all they all uh, have been doing less shows too. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah. But yeah. that's that's even more reason. Yeah. Hey, I just got to pull off one show. <laughs> <laughs> I don't got to do a whole tour. Maybe because my anxiety high. Maybe because of the pandemic and the risk, the insurance, or it's so yeah. difficult. Hey, just pull off one good show. Record that thing. Throw it online and make a special moment of how you present it. Because that's actually a crazy op. Because like you said, you something like this, right? Two thousand cap show. If you got an audience for it, of course, two thousand cap show. Really unique experience. So I cap there, and then I'm gonna take this content, maybe put a little bit up on YouTube to build a little free funnel, but then sell mm-hmm. the rest of it back in, bro. And you do that like once a year, you know what I'm saying? That'd be beautiful. Even that, yes. Beautiful, bro. Beautiful, man. <laughs> beautiful. There, there's so much opportunity in how we leverage our intellectual property today, which I think we said we we're gonna do a whole podcast on that at some point. But yeah. but yeah. Hey, you know, shout out to Jeezy. Um you know. Wait, so you didn't get the tickets? I didn't get the tickets. Okay, no, right. I, don't know, I thought it was going to be a happy ending. Like, no, nah, bro. Ain't no happy <laughs> ending in this story yet. Yet. You know what I mean? I'm about a month out, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm like, dang, man. I can make this a Christmas present. The timing, like, it was, bro. Oh. You know, I, I waited too long to tell myself the story to convince myself to get it. By the time I, I sold myself, it was it was too late. <laughs> <laughs> but now let's let's get into some quick quick facts for y'all, uh, which is a something we want to experiment with. We want to experiment with y'all. Let us know if it's useful or something y'all are interested in. But we just want to go through some numbers, right, and give y'all our quick opinion. Not go too deep, but we still think it's relevant enough for y'all to check out and know. 
So number one, Bad Bunny earns the highest grossing calendar year in live events history with $435.2 million from 247, no, 200,477,334 tickets sold. So let me shorthand that because that, that sounds like a lot. Uh, like that, I just 2.4. said four hundred and thirty million dollars made from two point four million tickets sold. That's two point four million people in eighty one shows played That's in twenty twenty two. Do some math on that. I mean, how many tickets are sold? Uh, there? Go and do your math now. First time we had saw this stat. This first of all, this stadium looks ridiculous for those who are listening. Like we had the stadium up, like it's ridiculous how many people are out here. This stadium looks like a like a FIFA game or something, but. Yeah. Um, the first time like you had shared this with me, you had mentioned the calendar year in live events, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Cause it was just like a lot of extra words. Why don't you just say the highest gross in tour? I randomly came across this and now I see why it's there. Let me see. Highest grossing tour music. Let me type that in. All right. So if you type that in, highest grossing concert tours, he's not the highest. I think I saw somebody who was like 750 million or whatever, like 776 million for Ed Sheeran. God damn. Yeah. See, <laughs> but that's why they said calendar year, because this tour went more than it crossed years. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Yeah. 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 Elton John, 749 million. Hold up, bro. This shit is stupid, bro. This is wild, bro. We're talking about 2018, like, was when the tour started. Oh, I didn't even peep that. What? Yeah. The so, so, we talking about, like, you know how strong your fan base has to be? <laughs> like, Elton John ain't really been Elton John, Elton John for, like, 30 years. Yeah. Like, of course, he's still Elton, but, like, that's a strong fan base when you're able to pull out U2, Guns N' Roses. Like, this list is, like, is, is, is riddled with, with those folks. But I wonder how that it's works. Crazy. Like, like, how do you... How are you still on tour for five years, bro? Like, when does it officially end? That is, <laughs> out yeah, that's a different game. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would love to learn what that what that's like. So that's just a quick stat that we wanted to uh, to give y'all though, and also that goes back to something we always say, right? Those small little things make a difference, right? Because yeah. there's no news here to say that Bad Bunny is the highest grossing tour because he isn't the highest grossing tour. He. Yeah. He's not even number five or six, I don't think, based on that list that I just read. But you say a calendar year, bam, yep. achievement. Let's spread it. Let's spread the word. Yep, it's me, me, Drake, and Tyler, bro. Hey, that is the game. <laughs> Y'all keep doing that. But you said you were working some math. You want to do that before we go to the next step? Oh, uh, yeah, 30,584 tickets to show. 30,584 tickets to show. Crazy. Sheesh. So it basically is a soccer game. Every show. <laughs> every show, bro. Wow. The World Cup, every show. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, man. Next stat we got here is music now has over 616 million paying streaming subscribers globally. Now, I think this number is important because I feel like a lot of artists and music professionals in general don't realize how small music streaming is. And I know 616 million is a big number, but when you think about all of these different social media platforms that have over a billion users, Mm -hmm. like the small, the, the streaming platforms don't hit on the same level. And by the way, this is globally and this is across all platforms. So you're talking about Instagram having over a billion users by itself, Facebook having Mm -hmm. over a billion um, users by itself. We're talking about 616 million being Apple Music, Amazon Music, YouTube, YouTube, all that stuff combined. So, and then probably some of these streaming platforms that we don't even know of in other places. Uh, let's see. One Boom reason. Play. What did you say? Boom play. Boom. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here, bro. <laughs> so I, I, we're going to do a real quick run now of some of the important uh, spark notes from this, but the number alone is is just meaningful and because it's still growing there's so much subscription revenue to come which means more money for the actual artist right and the, and the the um yeah the the, the well the labels too right uh, yeah, we depending can, on who you got yeah, we can we can hope yeah we can hope right <laughs> we can hope so 1600 1616 million subscribers 
to music streaming services at the end of, let me see, was that Q1? According to new estimates from media, that was up 17.6%. So it's still growing great. And let me see, the trend has still been up. Spotify, let's see if they have Spotify's most current number. What is this number? 400, four, no, 4,940. Global music streaming subscription market revenue. Oh, I know what they're doing. So they're probably saying Spotify is at like 400 million in subscription revenue. Got it, got it, got it. So again, look, these platforms, let me see, are this number, um, I mean, 616 million people is split up between all these different platforms. There's a lot of growth to go in the streaming market. Is it gonna be everybody? I don't think so because there's too much free shit out here today. Mm -hmm. But that also goes to let you know what we're missing out on because talking to my trainer today, I think I mentioned this before. He said every single month he was spending minimum $200 on music back in the day. All right. $2,400 a year. And he said, now I pay nothing. <laughs> <laughs> like happily. Like that's that's a crazy number we lost all those people who were super fans who literally budgeted and moved their life around music so it's a lot of money to be gained still um and that's a whole nother conversation for another day let's stick with the stat <laughs> 50 cents in the club has a 1 billion stream 50 cents in the club has hit 1 billion streams on spotify damn it just hit a billion that's crazy it was... is until you just remember Oh, the streaming. Pre-streaming era. Pre streaming yeah. And we're talking about when it first hit. You know, that's, is that like 2001 or something? Yeah. You know what I mean? So, Spotify, it probably didn't hit Spotify until like 15 years later or something like that. So, yeah, it just hit a bill. But that's actually more reflective of how lit it was. Yeah. Because we got a lot of old hits that haven't hit a bill yet. A bill yet so, they might have been of the moment hits and went crazy this is a i mean you know man bro, it's your birthday yeah every day type song <laughs> that's a good point bro like all those kind of like in the moment hits that were pre-streaming that we're never going back to because <laughs> we've outgrown them and don't remember them bro or like it just randomly hits you one day maybe and you go listen to it yep that's just crazy i ain't even think about that yeah, like yeah it's like i wish like nine-year-old me had Spotify, you know what I'm saying? Or something, something to remember what the fuck I was listening to back then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and all the way up. That's actually gonna be interesting. Yeah. To be able to have a tracking of like your playlist and all these things, it's yeah, data collected. Like yeah. decades of what you've been listening to. I was thinking about like my dang my mean. oldest Spotify account I got locked out of, but I had that account since like 2000. And, I mean, basically since Spotify came out. So what's that been? It's been like what, like six, seven years at this point. I mean, I'm locked out of it now, but it's like. Even the, the account we have that's now, like crazy. the company account we have, we have it like, what, like a year and a half, two years? Even that's sometimes crazy mm -hmm. scrolling now saying like, man, this is what I was listening to in 2019, 2020, yeah. you know what I'm saying? This is wild. Like, it lets you know what's popping and everything or what was at mm -hmm. that time, so it gives you a sense. Yeah, you can. Wow, That'll be like a game, man. When these when these young kids get old, you know what I mean? When mm -hmm. the people who are like 10 now, they get like 30, 40, mm -hmm. and they'll probably have a game where it's like reveal your playlist. <laughs> From when you were X years old or something like that. Yeah. That that that'll be really interesting, actually. Yeah. That's dope. That's gonna be fun. Might like, need to come like, like an app or something to like make that a simple thing to pull up or something. Yeah. That'll be hmm. like a music time capsule. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. No, that's that's actually pretty hard. Now, those are the quick stats that we wanted to give today. We probably talked about them even uh a lot longer than we actually will in the future, but we actually still <laughs> kept it short. <laughs> um but let, let us know if y'all think those type of stats are helpful just to hear and be aware of. We don't want to spend too much time going through some number stats because we already have the topics we have. But sometimes things are too important and we're like, man, okay, we, we, so we, we, we know people are going to get value from knowing this stuff. But yeah. we just don't want to spend an hour talking about it. Yeah, it's good to know. It's good to know. Good to know. Good to know. Now, last clip for the day. Roddy Rich reveals how much money it costs to make his shows go down. And I, I think he was exceptionally transparent in this. I was surprised that he 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 gave this information out freely and unsolicited. So let's go ahead and play this clip. Okay, so if yeah. you saying if you saying I'm booking Roddy mm -hmm. 
how much would you offer Roddy right now? How much would you? I, I don't know. I don't know what your normal uh, rate be, fam. What's your normal rate? You want me yeah, to go? Yeah, yeah, Nah, half a man. You right. If I give a nigga half a man for an hour worth of work. <laughs> By the way, people, half a man. I is... have never heard that before. <laughs> I was just about. <laughs> half a man is five hundred thousand dollars. I don't know why black people gotta just be be extra creative with stuff. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Half a man is five hundred thousand dollars. We be just big making stuff, but we and then we run with it. I know, bro. I know ish. This dude right here, he's never heard that shit before. But you know how somebody will say some shit and you get it, so you just run with it. That's exactly what's happening right now. He doesn't know what half a man is. No one knows what that shit is. <laughs> but okay, keep it up, Roddy. You, you you putting it out there. You create new lingo. <laughs> Reason why? Why I got I got an eighteen production team that I take everywhere I go. Oh, that's you get what I'm saying? My oh, mic man. alone is 15000 I'm travel. saying, even think about that, right? We singing into a mic that's different from everybody at the festival except the ones that's going after us because everybody's singing with the festival mic. Yeah, so that's your so own you sound You barely team. can hear them. Yeah, yeah, true. Right. true. I, I get on stage, you're going to hear everything I'm saying. Those people, the Fam. festival people is not working flames. your sound. We got a whole front of house, screens, mm -hmm. all Monster that shit. guy, all that shit. You yeah. got to pay for that. Okay, so if yeah. you saying... If I feel it. Great point. You got to pay for it. You want me to come provide the best experience that I can provide? You got to pay for that. Got to pay for it. Yeah. Got to pay for it. And I think that's something that like, people aren't cognizant of from a standpoint of you don't have to actually do that shit. Hmm. Like, Roddy is at a level where he's like, I have to keep this brand perception up, this mm -hmm. quality, because that's who I am. That's what I represent. I think Cardi mentioned like doing 600K for a tour mm -hmm. or something like that or a show I mean, it might have been a single show something ridiculous right yeah because he was just talking about a single show yeah, actually. Talking, yeah, like yeah. A festival, yeah so yeah cardi was talking about 600k for a single show maybe two three years ago and it's because i gotta maintain this brand perception it's no different than an artist saying yo if i'm gonna be in your music video i need you to be able to pay for my clothes mm -hmm. so i can look fresh however you know what i mean because i can't be looking janky messing up my brand me. I'm, I gotta stay me. I gotta stay me. <laughs> I gotta stay me. So, one, I didn't think about the fact why well, I, I was unaware of paying for a different mic, though. Yeah, I didn't know. That, I didn't know uh, they let performers bring their own mics with us. That's what I'm I never saying. Would have thought about that. Like, I thought that might have been like some special request that it, like a super particular like Kanye or Michael Jackson type. Prince type person might have made but probably not. those festivals probably not festivals. He, he, he don't like Rolling Loud you know what I'm saying maybe Coachella might do something like Rolling Loud ain't get you know special mic bro they like hey, make this shit work mm. yeah <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so I, feel, I can see I can yeah. see that I can see that so yeah so one maintaining your brand mm -hmm. can be expensive yeah right but two there's so many th different things to break down this is why People say, hey, like it costs so much money to bring me out, not just because it's me. It's because I'm bringing a whole team with me. If it was just me to show up, you might be able to just pay 100K. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you say you got an 18 people production team. That's crazy. People. I'm trying to think what that could be. That's, that's what multiple lights, sounds. You said they got the gas and the fires. I can't even, I'm trying to see that in my head. Because even like the biggest festivals I've seen back in, no, there's probably like 15 people on the stage. And then I think about it, it's probably about 15 people back there working. So, so yeah, it's, it's lining up in my head. I was trying to like see it out of my head. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because I, I want to say Roddy Rich was at one of the Rolling Louds I went to. And I don't know. It was a good show. I just didn't feel like it was like 18 people good. But it was also like a couple of years ago. So, it could have been, you know what I'm saying? It could have <laughs> been different. It was 18 people. Yeah. <laughs> like, it didn't like, feel like 18 eight. people work on this? You're like, maybe nine. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> 10. Like, it's for like 10. Right. Maybe 18. You're like, no. Nah. <laughs> you but. make it sound like I mean, but about eight of those people, they ain't do their job. <laughs> if this is all I'm getting. <laughs> Three of them were interns, man. I get that. But yeah, but yeah like, I get that. Like, the, the biggest thing that I look at is like, you got to preserve the experience. And I, I do feel like there are maybe not artists that, that level, because I feel like a lot of them, or hopefully a lot of them kind of get that by the time they get to that point. But I do think a lot of the artists in be, like below them, like in that weird space between kind of popping and really popping, they undercharge themselves a lot. And then because of it, they, they can't provide the experience they need to. And then because of that, the fans stop fucking with them as much. And then mm -hmm. the cycle, the whole cycle just starts to go down from there, right? Yep. 
because they're not thinking about it. It's like you trying to get in good with this promoter or this festival guy. You knock off 10K from your booking price, but you need that 10K to to bring your DJ to make sure your, your set runs smooth, right? Or like you need that 10K to get the, the, I don't know, some special lights or some shit that you always use to, to make your show the way, the way it is. So that's a, that's kind of the point I hope other artists get from it is like, you know, one, put these costs <laughs> into what you charge people for stuff like this. You know, like like really map that out. Like what does your ideal show look like? Or what does a great show for you look like? How much does it cost? How much you want to make from it? Boom, that's your price. Hey, <laughs> like that's yeah. what it needs to be. That makes a lot of sense to me. And you know, I think when you when you look at it that way, it definitely justifies because people are always pocket watching, right? Mm-hmm. But the all the the constant problem with pocket watching is you can't see inside the pockets. Mm-hmm. You're looking at what's going in, but you don't know what's going on inside the pockets. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't see those holes on the bottom paying the production team, paying for the mic, right? So, so yeah, no, I think it, it, like what you said, just figure out all the things that you want to pay for and, or to maintain that experience and start there. Try to get that money. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're not going to have it because I've seen some artists not do it then the promoters or the people that do shows with don't do certain things to make make sure the show is of quality and the whole show is a shit show, bro. And it's like yeah. fans, as fans, we always gonna blame you, the artists. We're never gonna be like, oh, that promoter is terrible, you know what I'm saying? For not getting you that fifteen thousand dollar mic you needed to make your voice sound crazy. I'm like, damn, Roddy, you knew you needed that fifteen thousand dollar mic to make your shit sound clear. Why you didn't get that shit before you pulled up? Yep. So we're never gonna blame them, bro. So because knowing that artist, like, yeah, just Charge for it. Right. <laughs> Tax for it, bro. Thanks. <laughs> all right, all right. So that is this episode, episode number 16. We appreciate y'all for tuning in. Once again, if you aren't in Brand Man Networking and you're an artist or manager label that's looking for free advice, free gaming courses, right? We get to go and have our casual abstract conversations here, but in the Brand Man Network space, we got step by steps on how to build out things like rollouts, how to format your content how to market your music in multiple different ways and strategies. Check that out. And other than that, as always, we appreciate y'all. I'm Brandman Sean. And I'm Corey. Peace. Peace.